Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the fourth module of DDCO which is related to input and output organization. Okay, so some topics are there which are important from the exam point of view. I have written here from the whole syllabus. I'll be discussing only those topics. And if you watch this video till the end, you can easily score more than 80% marks without wasting more time. Let's get started. Please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more videos like this. The first topic is accessing IO devices. So what is an IO device? Okay, IO means input and output. Okay, so we have input devices such as keyboard and mouse and uh, the microphone. All those give input to the CPU, right? That is called as input device and output device is the one through which we get the output such as desktop, printer and speaker. Okay, so accessing the IO devices. Now, there are IO devices connected to the system. Okay, so it is connected via bus structure. Bus is nothing but a straight line straight line which connects all the devices okay and this bus also connects the processor and the memory okay so this is the single bus structure which you are seeing here the system bus consists of three types the first is address bus second is data bus third is control bus these three are for different purposes address bus is used for identify which uh, is the address of the device and uh, where to send and where to take the data from that is unidirectional the second one is data bus data bus is used for writing and reading storing the data or getting the data from the memory and uh, to the output device and storing from the input device this is bidirectional because read and write both happen control bus is the one uh, which decides which input device should send or read the data okay during the input and output operation bus transfers the data okay what transfers the data bus transfers the data from the cpu to the input output device and vice versa from the input output device to the cpu or uh, to the memory so bus is the uh, interface which is connecting the uh, internal system to the input output devices okay you understood what is bus there are two types of io connection with the cpu the input output devices are connected to cpu in two ways first is memory mapped in memory map what happens in this technique both memory and the io devices use common bus to transfer their data to cpu now see memory and devices are interconnected with each other and uh, the devices can access the memory and there is a single bus to uh, transfer the data to the cpu suppose that device wants to transfer some data to cpu it will go through the memory and transfer to the cpu and the cpu will transfer the data from the memory to the devices this is called as memory mapped io in this memory is uh, common thing between the CPU and the devices. Second one is IO mapped IO. Here we have a separate bus for the memory and separate bus for the IO devices. That's the difference. We have IO interfaces. Okay, as I told you, there are three uh, control. There are three buses. The first is address bus, second is data line, and third is control line. So in address line, we'll be transferring the addresses, and the addresses will be decoded here in the address decoder. The data line will be transferring the data as well as it will be storing the status register. We'll be discussing what is the different uh, flags present here. And the control line will be having the control circuits which will be uh, handling the multiple devices requests and uh, which uh, device should be sending the data to the bus. All those things will be divide, uh, considered. Okay, So bus is divided into three parts and these are the uh, places where the internal operations happen. Okay, This is the IO interface. Now the status register and the data okay so data has data in and data out buffers so data in buffer will be activated when the input happens and data out will be activated when the output happens and whatever the input data is coming it will be stored first in data in and then it will be sent to the memory and the same thing from the memory it comes to the data out then only it will be sent to the io device okay so this is the input device it interacts with the control circuits and sends the data or uh, if it's output device it receives the data okay now let's understand the status register in the status register this is the important thing there is status and control register okay so in status register we have the flags dirq kirq what is dirq display interrupt request and kirq is the keyboard interrupt request if it is the output this will be activated if it is the input this will be activated okay flags for the ioi include s out and s in s out is the output flag and s in is the input flag the status output status input okay so whichever is happening that will be activated and the control flag will be DEN and KEN. DEN is for the display enable and KEN is for the keyboard enable. Whichever the operation you want to perform, that will be enabled here. And that will be denoted in the control uh, register. <coughs> and in program control IO, there is a code that will handle the IO operations. Okay, so all these things happen automatically. So that automatically happening will happen only when we set any program. That program is called program control IO. Okay, because of program control IO, we'll be able to perform these all activities. Okay, 
next topic is interrupt interrupt happens when the execution of program is stopped okay so the program is executing it is stopped in between why it is stopped because it wants to execute interrupt service routine now what is interrupt service routine for example suppose you are going normally in your life and sometimes an emergency comes so your normal routine will be broken and you'll be going into the emergency mode completing that emergency requirement and coming back to your normal life this thing is called as an interrupt right interrupt in your life like that same thing interrupt in your uh, computer okay so whenever an interrupt comes or some privilege command needs to be run or a vip command needs to be run at that time that will happen here and that is called as interrupt service routine so interrupt service routine will handle that vip task now whenever an io device wants to send an interrupt signal it switches one of the input devices connected to the interrupt request line so interrupt service happens because of input and output operation it, the program is happening normally we want to send an input in between so the program execution has to stop take the input and come back and process it uh, conti uh, means continue processing so whenever an input happens or an output needs to be sent interrupt service is called now which io device will send it that is requested in the interrupt request line many devices will be there i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 this is the interrupt uh, request line irl this is the interrupt request line and all the devices will be sending the request in this line okay the request is sent to the processor and the processor will decide which uh, device to give it the chance to send the uh, input so it can be either enabled or disabled by the processor based on the request and once a uh, first interrupt is considered all other interrupts are disabled okay once an uh, interrupt is uh, taken into consideration the other interrupts are disabled okay the other interrupts are disabled when first one is uh, taken the next one is uh, resumed and uh, taken so after the first interrupt is over then only the second one will be taken and uh, it will be uh, processed okay in case there are multiple devices which are requesting for uh, interrupt at that case what we will do is we'll use the interrupt vector okay in what does interrupt vector do it will have the address of all the multiple devices which are requesting and based on a priority one of them will be selected okay so it consists of an address of the interrupting io devices and processor loads the interrupt vector into the pc program counter and executes the appropriate isr interrupt service routine okay so whichever device is selected and based on that uh, device uh, isr that will be taken into consideration and uh, executed okay so interrupt nesting is the technique used wherein we'll be having different uh, devices see this is device 1 device 2 and device p all these devices are requesting here to the processor in INTR means interrupt request, INTA means interrupt acknowledge. Okay, so each device will have a separate interrupt request and interrupt acknowledge line. Which one will be selected is based on the priority. So the priority will be uh, taken uh, based on different methods. In this method, the device closest to the uh, processor will be taken as more priority. Okay, a similar method is used, which is called as daisy chain method. In daisy chain method, what we will be doing is this device will be having the highest priority, and after that, if it does not require interrupt, it will send to this device. If it does not require it will send to the, the another device and so on so it will be in a uh, order wise this is the highest priority second highest and third highest and so on and this is the interrupt request line and this is the interrupt technology line like that we'll be having different chain of lines okay this is the first uh, chain this is the second chain and third chain and there will be many chains okay so based on the priorities the chain will be selected first and based on this order the device will be selected okay <coughs> Next topic is the DMA, which is direct memory access. Okay, what do you understand by the term direct memory access? This is the memory and directly we are accessing. That's all. This is the IO device and this is the memory. We are directly accessing the memory. Okay, so direct transfer of data between the IO devices and the memory without the inclusion of CPU is called as DMA. Okay, to initiate DMA, CPU transfers the following parameters. Okay, so to initiate DMA, we have to have the following parameters. Starting address of memory block, where we have to start reading or writing and number of words to be transferred okay and the type of operation you are doing it is read or write these three parameters if it is given by the io devices to the cpu then we can directly access the memory okay that is called as dma since dma steals cycle of cpu it is called as cycle stealing okay also dma sometimes transfers the blocks of codes that is called as burst mode operation okay now let's understand about dma further there are three registers in dma how many registers are there three registers are there first is the starting address register the starting address is stored in this register and the word count how many words are to be transferred is stored in this register status and control will be having irq interrupt request interrupt enable and done and read or write the done will be uh, 
uh, switched on when the entire operation is done read or write will be specified here interrupt request if it is happening it will be specified here is it interrupt is enabled or not that will be specified here for each of the devices okay so the computer with the dma controller is shown as below this is the uh, very important uh, diagram see here what's happening this is the network interface okay from the network we will be accessing the dma controller and dma controller will be directly giving us access to the main memory okay like this we are going okay and this is the output devices and this is the input devices connected and we'll be having also our dma controller or the disk which is connected with the processor so this will be having separate disk for the controlling and storing of the um flags purposes and all this will be connected with the both processor and the main memory so directly we'll be able to access the main memory via the dma controller okay Bus arbitration means uh, which device will send the request. Okay, suppose that there are five devices. Okay, five devices are also requesting I want to send, I want to send, I want to send to the bus. But now which one will be selected? That selection is called as bus arbitration, means which device is selected for sending the data into the bus. And whichever device is selected, that is called as bus master. Okay, bus master can initiate and transfer the data via the bus. There are two methods to select the uh, bus master the first is centralized bus arbitration in centralized bus arbitration will be having a processor here and bbsy means B, uh, bus busy br means bus request bg means bus grant and uh, bg2 so first priority will be given to the uh, first one bg if the bus grant is there and it wants to send a request it will be sending via the uh, bus request uh, bbsy line if it is not it will be transferring the request to this one and it will be uh, sending if it wants to send and else it will pass on so in this priority it is and it is same to daisy chaining okay the daisy chain method we have uh, seen this is called as centralized okay the next one is the uh, distributed okay in distributed what happens there are many uh, devices connected there are many circuits connected and these circuits decide which devices to be sending the uh, data so here arbitrary lines are there arbitrary one arbitrary two three and four and this is the start arbitration whether it is to be started or not once this is started the data which is present in these four lines will be taken from all the devices and whether it is on or off that will be taken here and based on this order it will interpret which device is to be given the priority okay this order there is some uh, internal algorithm by which it will be decided which uh, device should be given the priority okay based on these bits there is a algorithm for that again okay? so uh, the winner will be selected and the winner will be able to send the data through the bus okay this is called as distributed bus arbitration you can understand this like a voting system okay they are voting the devices are voting and based on the highest number of votes they will be able to send the data through the bus okay <coughs> The data of arbitrary lines is sent to the interface circuit. This is the interface circuit. It processes four bit code and selects the winner from the given set of lines. Okay. Memory systems speed, size, and cost. Okay, so there are different size of memories. The highest size is the magnetic disk secondary storage. Lesser than that is main memory. Next, we have two types of cache: primary and secondary cache. And this comes under the processor, which will be having to uh, calculate instant data. Okay, and register is the fastest memory okay increasing size in this way and increasing speed and cost okay the cost will also be more in this way uh, in the upper part because the speed is more and the cost to uh, fetch the data will also become more okay so these are some of the uh, storages and in caches we use the sram which is static ram it is more faster and uh, where we use the dram in the main memory dram is a dynamic uh, random access memory okay in the write operation, it is done in two ways. What do you mean by write operation? Uh, we have a IO data here and the data needs to be stored into the memory. Okay. But before storing into memory, first you will store into the cache. Okay. So that afterwards you can store into the memory. And if you want, you can take it from the cache only rather than from the memory. That's what cache is used for. So here there are two ways in which we can do the write operation. First one is write through protocol. In write through protocol, what happens? Suppose that this is the IO device, this is the cache, this is the main memory. Here cache is also written and memory is also written in the same instant. That is called as write through protocol. Second one is write back protocol. In this, what happens? Suppose that this is the IO device, this is the cache, this is the memory. Here all the operations are happening and the data is stored here. When the operations are over, data will then be transferred. That is called as write back protocol. Here cache is only updated immediately memory is updated later on in cache uh, write through protocol here both memory and the cache are updated immediately okay 
moving on to the last topic we have the cache memory mapping functions okay so this is the cache this is the main memory how does mapping happen between them how do we get to know that which block is stored where there are three ways of handling that first one is the direct mapping second is associative third one is set associative set associative is the combination of these two let's understand the first one which is direct mapping in direct mapping the data block from the main memory okay understand this this is the main memory okay which you have the main memory this is the cache okay now the data block from the main memory let's take another any data block let's take 2672 2672 is to be stored into the cache which location it will be stored if the cache has locations from 0 to 127 where it will be stored that will be decided when we do the modulo 128 okay suppose that we have 2672 through under uh, to get to know the address where it will be stored in the cache we'll be doing modulo 128 when you do that we'll get 112 so this data will be stored into the 112th block of cache okay and we have the um overwriting also when uh, some other number comes that also answer comes as 112 so the latest data which was there that will be stored in that same position okay the main memory address is in this format tag will have 5 bits block will have 7 bits and word will have 4 bits okay this is the main memory address important uh, uh, information and uh, this diagram unit to make okay associative mapping here anywhere in cache the main memory block can be placed okay there is no specific algorithm anywhere you can store but then you need to uh, specify in the tag where it is stored okay the 12 bit address will be specifying at that and the word will be having four address uh, bits okay next is set associative mapping this is the combination of direct and associative mapping in direct mapping we used to do the modulo in associative mapping we used to store the answer in the tag now we'll be using the tag but also we'll be using the direct okay let's understand how does that happen the blocks of cache are divided into the several blocks called as sets now see this is the whole cache and this is divided into many blocks each is called one set okay and each block contains a control bit called valid bit each block contains a valid bit uh, that value can be either 0 or 1 0 means the when the power is initially applied and 1 means when the block is loaded from the memory for the first time so uh, every memory block is loaded into one of the sets okay this is the main memory and this is the uh, cache and every block is stored into one of the sets they, I, as i told you there are many sets right a cache is divided into many sets in one of those sets the memory block will be stored now each group is given a tag number we use this associative mapping also so it will be assigning a tag for each block okay and few of the tags and the blocks together form one set you got the point the whole cache is divided into many sets each set is divided into the blocks and each block will have one tag based on the tag and the set and the block will be able to identify where the block is stored from the main memory okay so here tag set and word is used 6 6 and 4 bits that's all if you found this video helpful please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one